Stark. Spencer. Nice weapon, Lance a little. Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we're taking a look at 20 awful games that could have been really awesome games when you think about it, if only certain things weren't overlooked. You ever had an intern position at a government agency? I have. Need I say more? All my exercise was moving papers from desk to desk. Before we begin, we publish new videos all week long, so be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League. And you're in for a world of- Ah, oh, shit! At first, we had no reason to doubt Rocksteady. This was the studio behind the Batman Arkham games, the company that showed how to make superhero games. Perhaps Suicide Squad was their chance to show everyone how a live service game should be made. Nope. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League proved all the live service skeptics right. While the story was solid and the gunplay was fun, the mission structure and world design was so mundane that the game quickly grew boring for most players after about 30 minutes. As for the live service elements, tell us, what is the point of having seven different currencies or sacrificing a proper ending just so you have an excuse to roll out more post-launch support? What is the point? I don't know. Something spooked him, I guess. Choo Choo Charles! One of the train operators was killed early on by the beast, so his old engine should be in there. The second Choo Choo Charles went viral, we were on board. The idea of a horror game featuring a demonic Thomas the Tank Engine was too goofy to pass up, and many shared the same sentiment. Unfortunately, novelty only gets you so far. Like Resident Evil's Nemesis and Mr. X, Charles would show up at the most inopportune times and rarely ever give up the chase even if he couldn't reach you. As for the cultists, you had no means of fighting back unless you ran all the way back to your train and took them out with your weapons there, or they just decided to give up midway through chase. With those two issues in play, Choo Choo Charles wound up overstaying its welcome for some folks. Hopefully the money it did make will let developer 2 Star Games flesh things out a bit more for a sequel. Alpha Protocol. No, believe it or not, you're not here because you're a people person. You're here because your psych profile says you're skilled at manipulating others. Was that a compliment? We can admit that Alpha Protocol might be hard for some to digest. Some of us are already on board with it for the simple idea of Obsidian Entertainment making an RPG shooter themed around secret agents. Despite the neat concept, even we gotta admit the game is hard to recommend. Yeah, he got his hands on some prototype Halbeck technology. A missile with a multi-stage targeting system called Jacob's Ladder. It doesn't run super well, the gunplay feels off and makes it hard to properly aim, the stealth is kind of difficult to get around, and the different character classes don't really offer much in replay value. Overall, Alpha Protocol was a rare bump in the road for Obsidian that very, very few can tolerate. Panzer Dragoon Remake At one point in gaming history, Panzer Dragoon was one of Sega's coolest games on the market. However, as rail shooters have faded into obscurity, so has Panzer Dragoon. Perhaps a remake could have started a resurgence, which in that case, we would be up for a remake of the first game. The problem is that Panzer Dragoon Remake was unable to do just that. It was quite literally a one-to-one -one recreation of the first game, with no bells or whistles to try and improve the tired formula. And with the game only lasting about an hour from start to finish, we have to wonder what the point of this was if it wasn't to revive the IP. Wolfenstein Youngblood
Contrary to what most folks were saying at the time, a co-op Wolfenstein was a really cool idea. Running around and blasting Nazis with oversized weapons and liberating areas of the world would have made for a fun game. Where Youngblood went wrong was how it approached the story and its lack of any interesting ideas. Despite being an FPS with some RPG elements, there's nothing in the mechanics to make Jesse and Zofia fun to play as. It was already bad enough that their dialogue was hit or miss with the banter. Sometimes it was genuinely funny, other times it was obnoxious. And so, many dismissed Youngblood the second it dropped. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite The Marvel vs. Capcom games have a storied history of excellent mechanics and massive rosters, but for the fourth game in the series, Capcom aimed higher and included a story mode. Sounds like another fantastic addition to what would be a fantastic game, right? You couldn't be more wrong! I have care coming to Redfield. These were once my people. Even now they fight well. The story mode had some incredibly awkward writing and an absurd quagmire of story beats cobbled together haphazardly. It didn't help that much of the roster had some really weird proportions in their faces and bodies. You mean to tell us that Capcom really couldn't do better than this? Really? KO the Kangaroo With so many amazing 3D platformers coming out of the woodwork between Crash, Spyro, and the indie market, it seemed like there might be room for KO the Kangaroo. Then the demo came out, and it showed some troubling signs. By the time the game launched, well, the Kangaroo was down for the count. Just that chilling and relaxing is something that a person your age could benefit from. K.O. the Kangaroo succeeded in making pretty visuals, but failed in conjuring a captivating story or even coming up with a decent combat system. Considering K.O.'s whole shtick is being a kangaroo with boxing gloves, it's hard to believe that developer Tate Multimedia couldn't come up with something more creative than what was delivered. Forspoken While we did defend Forspoken in our recent list of 10 games that received unfair criticism, we can understand why folks were dismissive of it. The story and writing are pretty freaking dreadful. It makes it hard to want to like this game, but credit where it's due, there is a great game underneath it. Seriously? No. The traversal is fun, the combat is spectacular visually and satisfying to take part in and the boss battles are colossal in scope. Frey's story did have potential at one point, but if one thing is certain, Gary Whitta and Amy Hennig did not write whatever was put into the final product. I do not know how I got here. I am exhausted. I am starving, and all I want is to go home. Bounty Battle With Smash Bros. Ultimate wrapping up DLC at the time, there was enough room for some new platform fighters to fill the space. Bounty Battle had the right idea by making a game centered on indie games, that is the game we got at launch, but holy crap did it run like hot garbage. You cannot launch a fighting game with an abysmal frame rate and awful load times, and you have to make sure it plays well. This game does not play well, it does not feel great to play at all. It sucks. It runs great now, but it's, it just feels horrible to play. This game could have popped off had there been some extra time to properly optimize its performance. New game. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands Mushroom. 
At one point, Wonderlands looked like it could have been a bold new direction for Borderlands since Borderlands 3 was mediocre as hell. We really could have used more of Tiny Tina's wild imagination in an expanded campaign of bunkers and badasses. Of course, Gearbox wasn't willing to put in their 100%, let alone their 110%. Goodest, majesticest ruler ever seen by mortal eyes! Queen Butt Stallion! While much of the humor was stuck in 2012 tween mentality, character classes offered no room for players to experiment and felt like half-baked knockoffs of Borderlands 2's selection of character classes. The gunplay was still fun, yes, but why? Why only excel in that and make everything else feel so meh? Mighty number nine. See, that's your dash move. There's a short dash, a long dash, jump dash, spiral, slide. There's probably a dash that makes you breakfast. I don't know. Mighty number nine will forever live in infamy and serve as a blight on Kaiji and Afune's career, and deservedly so. This was a game that had the audacity to insult its own demographic and act like a hotshot while offering a bland experience and nothing interesting in its combat or level design. But there was a time where this game was looking like it could have been the next big thing. All you need to look at is one beautiful piece of concept art showing a game that was striving to be a major evolution in the action platformer genre. Yeah, not in this timeline. But hey, what we got, it's better than nothing. Even if it's not perfect, it's better than nothing. AEW Fight Forever. For the longest time, WWE has reigned supreme as the top dog in wrestling games. But that's because it's only ever been the only option next to the Fire Pro Wrestling games. With the rise of the AEW, it was only a matter of time before the promotion would launch their own game to further compete with WWE. It went horribly. Here is your winner, and still the AEW Women's World Champion. AEW Fight Forever was littered with about as many bugs and glitches as the older WWE 2K games. Meanwhile, WWE 2K23 was pulling in big numbers even more. Some improvements have been made to Fight Forever since launch, but with such a lean roster and a dull campaign, AEW still has a long way to go in the gaming market to take on the head honcho. Silent Hill, The Short Message. Don't worry about what people think. Be proud. Konami has been eager to bring Silent Hill back and do so in a way that is sure to sell gangbusters. That streaming stunt, though, was not super well received. As for the free-to-play The Short Message, well, if you want a game that advocates mental health, this game isn't it. Never had we seen a game relish in its own misery without really diving into its own subject matter. And my classmates... talk about me. Might not be a bad idea to leave town, actually. All the game seemed to want to say was mental health sucks, but live a good life. Okay, and? These days, if you want to properly explore mental health, and effectively communicate the struggles of certain disorders, you have to go further beyond death, depression, sadness, anxiety, and self-loathing. Take it from me, somebody who struggles with a lot of that stuff. There is more to these problems beneath the surface than just being sad and being upset and being scared. Just look at Silent Hill 2, which... Oh boy, speaking of Silent Hill 2, that remake... That remake is scaring us in the worst ways. <laughs> Who's this? Find it. Meet your maker. The chance for a cure in those with uncorrupted genetics. The key to humanity's salvation. You must kill for it. Behavior Interactive has long been working on Dead by Daylight since 2016, and it's currently expanding that IP in fun and interesting ways. So, would a new IP from them possibly repeat the success of DBD? One would hope, especially for a game like Meet Your Maker. Think if Doom was done in the style of Super Mario Maker. 
build your lair guarding valuable resources in hopes of offing players while you go raid their lairs for their resources. Sadly, this game was dead on arrival. Players quickly found ways to implement cheap tactics resulting in unbalanced gameplay, and on top of that, the performance was unstable at times and there simply wasn't anything beyond build, raid, and repeat. Also, some of the places just were boring, and so the game has been largely abandoned by players since launch. Meet Your Maker is probably going to be dead by the time it hits its one year anniversary. Redfall. You can't walk away from me. No one can. You all belong to us. Arcane Studios can make some really interesting games like they did with Dishonored, Prey, and Deathloop, but Redfall? It is really hard to find any redeemable qualities in this title. Redfall could have been a contender with its colorful cast of playable characters and vast lore between the town of Redfall and how the vampires managed to invade it. Sadly, this game was busted on release. Not only did the game run poorly even on the best internet speeds, the AI was beyond stupid when it came to recognizing the player and properly planning its attack strategy. Even the boss battles suffered in just how samey each one felt. With reports revealing that Arcane staff was hoping Microsoft would cancel the game after the corporation bought Bethesda in 2020, it's safe to say that no one wanted this game even prior to its launch. Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach I am experiencing a malfunction. The recharge cycle is not complete. Will you shut up? For those of us too freaked out by the original games and how they force you to just sit in one room, a survival horror set in the FNAF franchise was right up our alley. Then you present the setting of it taking place in the massive indoor theme park. Dude, Security Breach should have been one of 2021's biggest hits. Thing is that developer Steel Wool Studios didn't run some thorough checks and balances. Many of the monsters lurking around the Pizzaplex were bugged in their pathing and behavior, resulting in many unfair deaths. Plus, they can just waltz through any door regardless if it's locked on the outside or not. Seriously, not even a PS5 version could make the game function as intended. Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection As if Aspire couldn't screw up any more Star Wars games like they did with Knights of the Old Republic and its sequel, Battlefront Classic Collection quickly became their biggest blunder. Many folks have been craving for a re-release of the first two Battlefront games, but with visual upgrades and maybe some new maps. Aspire said, hey, we'll do that, but the delivery came with a huge caveat. Battlefront Classic Collection not only launched with various audio and graphical glitches, it also launched with only three servers available for online multiplayer. All of this led to this duology becoming the ninth most hated game on Steam. Aspire is going to have to do a lot to win the trust of players again after this. Resident Evil 6 If you take the survival horror formula of the classic games, or even the more action-heavy RE5, you can make Resident Evil work in almost any setting. So, if you wanted to take Leon and company and put them in a situation in, say, China, Capcom would have had our support, but the slop churned out here was unacceptable. The action was way too over the top with explosive boss fights, the story was kind of a mess to follow and hard to keep up with, and of all the campaigns, you give 
Ada the worst one? A Resident Evil game set in China has promise, so maybe a remake is in the works, but what we got in 2012? It wasn't it. Anthem. Even after the mess that was Mass Effect Andromeda, many had hope for Bioware. Anthem was going to be their first original IP in several years, and the devs were showing some confidence in their product. And those who played it prior to launch, the ones who said more than just, oh, the flying's good, they all said there was some promise in the gameplay and combat. What we got, though, was another looter shooter that was just littered in damage numbers, glitches, and enough bugs to cause crashes on PCs and consoles. What happened here? Well, several staff members told controversial outlet Kotaku that the game was developed within the last 18 months before launch. Turns out, a lot of mechanics weren't even finalized or kept getting added and removed and added again during marketing. Despite promises to update and fix the game for a possible revival, Bioware eventually gave up on trying to make Anthem a thing and ceased support in 2021. What do you want me to do? Just stand in the corner and look pretty again? Marvel's Avengers. Why have the public thinking you're still worried about the Avengers? Let my people handle it. We have a Daptoid to launch. Honestly, this might be the biggest crash and burn in the games industry since Atari dropped E.T. back in 1982. Marvel's Avengers could have been such an easy win for Square Enix. Could we have gotten a JRPG in the style of Final Fantasy or Dragon Quest? Or how about an RPG focused on traversal and mobility like in Kingdom Hearts? We would have settled for a Marvel-themed Bubble Bobble spin-off even. In the end, we got none of those. Marvel's Avengers turned out to be a live service game focused on collecting gear, increasing power levels, and mashing attack buttons in between cooldowns. It was a game that offered nothing and expected nothing from you except your cash. Square Enix took a massive $60 million loss on making the game and wound up selling developer Crystal Dynamics and the Tomb Raider IP to Embracer Group. As for the game itself, Marvel's Avengers was pulled from sale and had its servers shut down in September 2023. Well, I don't believe it. Guess I'll find Mr. Stark myself. Which awful game do you think had some genuine promise? Did it make our list? Let us know down in the comments, and be sure to subscribe to Mojo Plays for more great videos every day. Flags on the way! It's not like we can let her do a runner! Nah, that's exactly what it's like. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, there's more where that came from.